Hello, I'm Bill Gates, Chairman of Microsoft. In this video, you're going to see the future, Windows. Microsoft first came up with the Windows concept back in 1983. And today, the leading software users have switched into the Windows environment. It's really incredible how quickly our powerful applications like Word and Excel and PowerPoint have been adopted. It's not just Microsoft applications. Even companies like WordPerfect and Lotus have now come out with Windows applications. And every week, we see new innovative work. It's really attracting all the innovation in the industry. We predicted this a long time ago, and now it, it's the future. Let's take a look. I can't? What? OK. <laughs> Hello, I'm Stephen Berry, and welcome to Soft Vision, where today we're going to add some colour and spice to your life <laughs> by looking at Microsoft Windows. And joining me, we have Jackie from Microsoft. Hi, Steve. Hello there. Well, this is your second time. You're a bit of a veteran now. Well, I do feel like an old hand at this. <laughs> you certainly will by the end of the video. <laughs> for, for those people watching that perhaps haven't seen you before, perhaps you'd like to tell us what you do at Microsoft. Yes, uh, I'm a systems engineer at Microsoft, and a systems engineer helps an organisation evaluate mm -hmm. um, products before they actually sign on the dotted line ah. to, to purchase. And I specialise on the desktop and messaging mm -hmm. area of Microsoft uh, products. OK. Yeah. Well, we're looking at two areas of Windows today, two different incantations if you like. Mm. One is Windows and one is Windows Workgroups. Yep, that's right. What's the difference you're probably going to ask? Yeah, what is the difference? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, um, Windows for Workgroups is basically Windows, mm -hmm. but it has some additional features inside of it, and those are features to enable people to um, share information. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I might want to share some files that I have on my hard disk with a colleague. Yep. I may have a printer attached to my PC that I could make available to other people mm. within the organisation. Um, it also has a couple more things we can send electronic mail between people within yes. the work group as well. So if you're perhaps um, starting up a, a company mm -hmm. um, and often money is tight and you want to be able to share data between you, yes. then uh, Windows for Work Groups provide a really um, economically viable yeah. way, shall okay. we say, yes. of, of networking your company together. Mm. But whether people are using Windows or Windows Work Groups, either way, this video will be... Oh, perfect. yes, yeah. And, and the video is really aimed at people who are just starting mm -hmm. uh, within the, the Windows environment. It's not intended to be a particularly advanced video mm -hmm. or, or indeed technical. Um, so if you've been using Windows for years and years, then you may yes. not find out too much from the video. But if you're just new to, to Windows, then mm -hmm. this will be perfect for you. Yes. Now, there's probably a few people watching who are coming from the DOS world, the you know, sort of less friendly applications, yes. if you like. Yeah. Um, a lot of people say Windows is very easy, but I would imagine making that transition is quite a difficult thing. Oh, yes. Um, it's not um, something that you can take to immediately. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the most difficult part of moving to the Windows environment is, is learning to use something called the mouse, mm. which uh, we'll this, look at uh, later. This little here we are, this yeah. little rodent yeah. here. Yeah, they're quite friendly. Mm -hmm. um, Doesn't bite your hand off. <laughs> and they don't need feeding or anything like that. But, right. but in my experience and, and colleagues, at Microsoft, that's mm -hmm. the most um, tricky part for people to mm -hmm. actually adjust to. Once they've overcome that and yep. they're familiar with the Windows basics, then it's all downhill from there, Fine. basically, yeah. Okay, well, we've got a lot to cover, so uh, I think we'll make a start. Okay. One piece of advice I would give you is uh, don't try and watch the film from start to finish, unless you're really keen. <laughs> use, the, <laughs> use the fast forward on your video recorder and use the on-screen clock to help you find the section that you want to learn about. I yeah. think that's more appropriate oh, yeah, way of doing definitely. it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Fine. Shall we make a start? Indeed. Okay, we'll move on now and have a look at the first chapter. Okay. Right, well, we're going to start out by looking at all the graphical things you see on the screen when you first start Windows. Yes. But what do you do to start Windows? To, to start Windows, you type in Win, mm -hmm. W-I-N. Right. Um, and the major difference you'll see whether you're using Windows or Windows for Workgroups mm -hmm. is that Windows for Workgroups will prompt you to enter a password right. to enable you to log on to the network. Yes. Um, we're not on the network at the moment, so mm -hmm. we just typed in Win, and, and here we are within Program right. Manager. So if you are using the Workgroup version, you must remember your password. Remember your passwords, and they need to be changed regularly as well, so that's... Uh, for security reasons. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we're going to obviously look at the, the graphical elements and using the mouse to manipulate things. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people probably are anxious to know if they can still use keystrokes that yeah, they're familiar with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Um, in fact, the, the answer to that is yes, you mm -hmm. can. And there are many things within Windows which um, you can do much more quickly by yeah. using the 
your keyboard. It's just a question of whether you can retain um, the, the keyboard mm -hmm. uh, keystrokes that you need to use. Right. Uh, some people are very good at that, others not so useful, so they tend to use, they use the mouse. What is better, to use the mouse, the keyboard, or, or a combination? It's really a combination, Steve. Mm -hmm. A lot of people... Um, misinterpret windows and believe the minute they move to a graphical interface suddenly all their keyboard skills go out the window mm -hmm. and the mouse takes over. Yep. That isn't true at all and in fact the most efficient worker will use a combination of the keyboard and the mouse. Fine. Yeah. Okay, so we'll give some keystrokes throughout the... Yes, yeah, so we'll try video. to drop a few in as we uh, <laughs> come through the video. Good. Well, let's make a start and we've got some things here. You can talk us through that. Okay. Um, let's top start at the uh, top left-hand corner here. If I select using the mouse on that uh, horizontal dash, that's yes. called the control menu right. within Windows, yep. and basically you can see from the menus available that it allows me to, to close down this particular window. I can maximise, minimise, and we'll look at all of these, these things in more detail later on. So I'll yep. just click away from there to deselect. And this is the left mouse button. I'm using the left mouse button, yes. Um, what about we this, also, blue strip, this blue strip along the oh, top? Oh, okay. That's called the uh, title bar. And that tells me the name of the application that we're currently in, which is Program Manager. Oh. Um, what, so is, what is the Program Manager exactly? The, the Program Manager, that's a good question actually. The Program Manager, um, if you like, it's a, a graphical front end mm -hmm. to my C drive on my computer. Right. Um, whereas within the, the DOS environment, you'd have the C prompt and oh, you'd yes. see all your directories listed. C backslash yeah. programs. <laughs> Not terribly friendly. <laughs> um, here we're looking at all of our, the information on our C drive, mm. but just in a graphical sort of way. Um, okay. and, and that obviously makes it a lot easier for us to, to find a way around the applications that we have installed as so well. So all of our programs live in there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Okay. Perhaps let's um, carry on here. Yep. Um, we then have the menus. Now I can execute these menus using the mouse or mm -hmm. again for the keyboard users. Uh, wherever you see a letter underlined yep. and you hold down the Alt key, that will execute that menu. So Alt and F, for example, oh, right. will execute the file menu. Then you can use your up and down, left and right arrow keys to move, move across, between the right. menus. So up and down arrows to move up and down up one and menu. Down, and then left yep. or right mm. to move to the next menu. Okay. Whilst we're in the menus, perhaps if you go back to the file, I'd, I'd notice some things in there that perhaps you could explain to us. Yes, okay. First um, of all, those greyed out things. The greyed out things. Have I got, have I got dirt on my monitor? Or <laughs> no, you haven't. Um, don't worry too much about that. That's a standard Windows convention. And basically, Windows will only make available to you certain options given the particular um, scenario that you are in. All right. So um, it will grey out options which aren't valid for you to select at any given time. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll also see that we have three dots yes. after a couple of the options. That's telling you that uh, if you select that particular menu option, you'll be asked to make a selection or a choice of some description. Ah. So you'll be taken into a second dialogue box, a in dialogue. other words. Right. Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, for example, if we go File Properties, you can see there that we have another dialogue box presented to us. So the command just won't execute straight away. You need to supply more information. That's right, yes. That's what did right. you do there? You clicked on Cancel? Sorry, I, you... I just clicked on Cancel then. Yep. Yes, I did. <laughs> sorry yeah. to stop you. We're going to make sure that we don't, <laughs> we don't lose anybody along the I way. I know, I know. I'm sorry about that. Okay. I did um, also notice, if you go back to the file menu just one more time. Yeah. To the right of some of the items, uh, enter, delete, yes. alt and enter. These give you the keyboard alternatives for executing those particular commands. Mm -hmm. um, so within any Windows applications, if you want to open it, a standard convention is to use the enter key yep. on the keyboard. Okay. Um, so again, they're useful things for people to remember sure. um, when you're working within the Windows environment. Okay. What about all these little boxes now? Ah, well, these are known as uh, program groups. Mm -hmm. um, and within Windows, you have a number of default groups groups set up and basically if I use the mouse at this point we can rearrange these groups oh. on our desktop. You're just clicking and dragging? I'm just clicking and dragging using the left mouse button here right. to rearrange those groups on my desktop. That's a bit messy Jackie. <laughs> I know, I know. Well uh, you'll be pleased to hear that within Windows there is a, a menu option on the window menu here called arrange icons. Oh. So if I select that Oh, that's better. Windows will just arrange those very nicely for me. I'm an orderly sort of person. I know. So <laughs> keep everything in its place. <laughs> I'll try to keep tidy, Steve. Okay. Um, if I want to look inside of any of those program groups, mm -hmm. um, remember just now we talked about using the Enter key. Yep. Um, I could, let's perhaps select the main group here, using the mouse. And if I just choose the Enter key, that will open that group for me. Ah, and if you were going to use the mouse, you would, what would you yeah. do? Yeah, let me just show you. If I close that by using the Control menu, Right. Okay, let's go back there. And to use the mouse, I simply double click or yep. click twice with the left mouse button. Right. Does exactly the same thing. Okay, so you've opened a program group. Yep. And these are programs? These are programs within my main group. Mm -hmm. um, 
and each of these programs is there for a particular reason and we'll be looking at these in a lot more detail later on sure. but basically I could move between these um, items within my program group again by using the mouse mm -hmm. just by clicking or we could use the keyboard if I use the arrow keys on the keyboard that will oh, jump nice. me also another tip here coming up Steve yeah, yes. um, <laughs> if I wanted to go to the the readme file for example in that group yep. if I just choose the letter R on the keyboard oh, that will neat. jump me straight to that particular Right. Um, application. So it looks for the any letter you type. The in. first letter. That's right. Where you've got a couple of items with the same letter, then obviously, uh, yes, it would be a bit confused. I know we're going to look at starting applications later, but what's the procedure if we were going to start um, with these? Really, the same as we've seen already. I could use the mouse to double click. So let's perhaps go to the control panel, double click using the mouse, uh -huh. and uh, and it's firing that. That's up. opened. More icons yet More again. More icons in here, and exactly the same rules apply to move around between these icons and mm -hmm. to launch them. Let's close that down. So clicking um, on that little Clicking on that, rectangle. or we could use the return key on the keyboard and open the control yep. panel. Okay. And to, to close this away again? To close this away, we could use um, one of these buttons over here. Now, the downward-facing arrow is called the minimize right. icon, and the upward-facing arrow is called maximize. And we'll look at those in a bit more detail in the next chapter. Right. But very simply, to close this group, I could just select the downward-facing right. arrow. Okay, so, so are some of the, the program groups we've got here standard? Will people see these at home? Um, yeah, the ones which are standard. Now, we have to differentiate here between Windows <laughs> and Windows for Work groups, so let's perhaps start with uh, Windows. Mm -hmm. um, you would have Games, Accessories and Main. Yep. You may also have this Applications group if you have a version of MS-DOS, which is version 6 or higher. Okay. okay. So this is installed because of MS-DOS version 6 or right. higher. So don't panic if you don't see it. No, don't panic if you don't see it. It. Um, with Windows for work groups, you also have games, accessories, and main, but you also get in addition the network group, because uh -huh. remember we said that Windows for work groups gives you networking capabilities, yep. and there's also this startup group here, again, which we'll look at in more detail later on. Okay, now, what about this one, Jackie's Programs? Okay, I thought you were going to ask about that. Basically, I've created my own program group, mm -hmm. and I've given it the name Jackie's Programs, and inside of there are all of the applications that I use on a regular basis. So the Windows environment is very customizable. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to show us how to create oh, yes, groups? Oh, yes, yes, yes. This, this is just a preliminary look here um, at the program. A, That's a tricky word to say, isn't it? Early in the day. So we can create our own program groups later on in another chapter. I did notice, actually, when you um, clicked once on a program group, You've got a little menu popping up. Yes, you do. Um, again, it's another way for you to open up that program group. So, so far, we've seen double clicking mm -hmm. um, using the enter key, and there's a third way um, which enables us to use the mouse here so we could restore or indeed I could move that program group as well. Right. So, lots of ways. Lots of ways. Of, lots of ways, many, many different ways to, is to it work with Windows. Courses? It really is, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, What's this big grey area yep. we see at the back? One final thing we need to really cover. Um, the grey area that we see in the background here is known as our desktop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the program manager is currently sitting inside of my desktop. Right. If we wanted to, we could um, minimise the program manager. Mm -hmm. And you can now see the whole of my desktop is revealed. Right. And uh, program manager is sitting there, bottom left-hand corner. And then I can maximise the program manager. Does it have to be in that position? No, nope, it yep. can be wherever you want it to be. If I just minimise again, I could pick it up using the mouse here and have it ah. in the centre. Right, so this is a bit like the desk in your office, is Think it? about it as the desk in your office, yes, where you put all of your tools, um, your word processing documents, your spreadsheets, mm -hmm. anything like that, sit within your desktop. Okay. And we'll look at this again yeah. in more detail later. We're looking a bit barren. Can we bring it back? Yes, we can. <laughs> Double, Double click. click there. Fine. Back into program manager. Well, you've set the scene very nicely because we're going to come back and uh, look at manipulating yeah. the environment. Yeah. So we'll move on now and have a look at the next topic. Good. Okay, now just to test whether I've been the diligent pupil or not. Student. <laughs> Student. The, we've had, we have the desktop, yes. which is where everything sits. Yeah. You've got the program manager, yep. which keeps all your programs in it. Where your applications and programs sit, yes. Yep. Are we going to look now at um, manipulating each of these things? Yeah, and, and how we actually move between those particular groups mm -hmm. and, and the various conventions that we really sure. need to, to have people remember. Okay, let's have a look at that now. <laughs> okay. Now, the program manager itself, is that, first of all, can we do anything about the size of it? Yes, well, where you have the blue title bar here, First thing that we could do using the mouse here is select with the left mouse button mm -hmm. and we could pick it up 
and we could move it to a new location. Uh -huh. So let's perhaps just drop it up there just to show right. people. So you click anywhere on that blue area. Anywhere in the blue area, doesn't yep. matter where. Can we do it again? Yeah, yep. let's pick it up using the left mouse button and let's position it perhaps back in the centre of the screen. Okay. Roughly in the centre. Roughly in the centre. Yeah. Can we adjust the size of the box? Yes, we can. Um, if we move to any edge of the program manager, mm -hmm. you can see my mouse has changed now to a double-headed arrow. Yes. So if I hold down again the left mouse button, and this is something that you can only do using the mouse, Stephen, mm. um, so a, a useful task here, and we can drag that in to the left. Uh -huh. Now we see something else that we haven't yet seen. Yes, those arrows. Um, we have arrows. These are known as scroll bars, and we have uh, vertical scroll bars mm -hmm. and horizontal scroll bars. And basically, they are a graphical indication. They're telling me there's more information to be viewed within that window that currently isn't, isn't available to me. Sure. And we can get to that information a couple of ways. I can move to the bottom arrow here and slowly click with my left mouse button. And it's disappeared. And it's disappeared, and that's because we just about have everything in view okay. now. Um, but there is still information that I need to scroll along in the bottom window here, in yep. the bottom scroll bar. All oh, right, accessories was out there. To, yeah. Or we could grab this square here, mm -hmm. and we could move that. Okay, that's another way along. of doing it. And if I want to just resize that window, Oh, there you can see. So they appear and mm -hmm. disappear automatically. So when there's no scroll bars, you can see everything. You can see everything within the window. And again, that's a useful tip to actually uh, have there on screen. OK. Um, now, we have the groups here. We showed earlier how we can move between the groups using mm -hmm. the mouse here. Um, another quick way of moving between the groups, a keyboard uh, shortcut here, is Control F6 oh. will actually also jump me between those groups Control there. Control plus F6. F6. Perhaps not particularly intuitive. <laughs> I think you really, um, want to, really want to use keystrokes. <laughs> yes, I think key, uh, keystrokes or, or mouse is uh, mm -hmm. probably easier there. OK, you talked about these up and down arrows, these grey boxes yeah. earlier on. Can Let, we have a closer look at those? Illustrate those more carefully, yes. Mm -hmm. um, minimise, let's just show that one first of all, shall we? If we click on the minimise arrow, mm -hmm. as we saw before, the application will simply just close down into an icon right okay or a picture and basically that application is still running mm -hmm. we've just chosen to clear our desktop perhaps we want to load up a second application or right. whatever and then to restore that yep. again as we saw before we could double click with the mouse we could use the enter key on the keyboard or perhaps let's choose this method here restore and restore yep. now the upward facing arrow is known as maximize and let's just click on maximize oh. and now you can see that we have actually covered the whole of our desktop. Okay. Has a desktop disappeared? It's, it's just sitting behind the program manager. Ah. Um, and we could get back to the desktop. Notice now that my maximize icon mm -hmm. has changed to two double arrows. Yes. And that's known as the restore button. Okay. And that will effectively restore you to your previous view that you had before you maximized. What was interesting there is that if we see the position of the program groups now, and when you maximize it, if you could just perhaps do that again for us, yeah. you see that they pretty much keep their position. They do. Um, and this is where you may want to go to the window menu mm -hmm. and say arrange icons, and they will be arranged ah, within right. that new program manager okay. size. What happens if you now restore the program manager? Uh, well, we'll probably get those arrows, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't see anything. Telling us we can't see anything. Another quick way of bringing them back into view would be to say arrange icons. Yep. Oh, I see. Yes. That, um, but that's a trap for uh, new players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, the arrows are telling you straight away that uh, there's information there that you mm -hmm. can't currently see. Okay. Let's just maximise again, shall we? What about the program groups themselves? Can we do anything with those? Yeah, we can um, pick them up. Oh, we can move those also. And we can move them. Yep. Now, um, it's quite likely that when you come into Windows, you may want to have some program groups already open, mm. perhaps ones that you use on a regular basis. Um, let's perhaps open up a couple just to illustrate that. If we open up Main... Double-click. Double-click. And let's also open up Accessories. Just see it there, yes. Now, oh. the, the problem here, as you can see, is that uh, main is, is hidden behind accessories. Um, again, this is a very useful tip to remember. Go to the window menu, mm -hmm. and this time choose tile. Right. And there you can see that Windows has arranged very neatly for us. Side by side. Side by side. 
So if you think of these as being windows, then you would always go to the window menu? Yeah, yeah. and I think uh, that's probably one of the reasons why it's called windows. I'm not too sure about that, but uh, it's a fairly uh, good guess there. And then you've got, I notice on each window, you've got the, uh, the same up and down arrows. The same up and down arrows. So let's go to the main group mm -hmm. here, and we may want to minimise my uh -huh. main group. And there you can see it's appeared at the bottom of the screen. Right. And if I double click on there, mm -hmm. it will return to its size. the same position where it was before we minimised. Okay. okay. Now you've got the up arrow. Could we try that? Yes. Um, let's try it on accessory, shall yeah. we? To be different. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, now we have what's happened? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Something slightly different here. Um, basically, we still have the program manager, but sitting within the program manager, we have the accessories ah. group. And because we've maximised accessories, we've um, that's else. why it appears in brackets after program manager. We haven't really lost everything else, it's just that that's currently got full screen. So again, we could go back and notice also, Steve, that we have two restore icons here. Lots of arrows in. Yes, let me just explain, mm. shall I? Um, the bottom set of double arrows refers to the accessories group. Yes. And the top set of double arrows refers to my program manager. Right. Because we have a window within a window. So which one do we need to? We need to, to select the, the bottom um, set of arrows mm -hmm. so we can restore accessories. That's gone okay. back to a smaller window. That's gone back to a smaller window. What if that was maximised and you press the double head arrow for the program manager? Um, well, that would be quite interesting, actually. I think we'll display that rather than me try to describe <laughs> it because um, there you can see mm. we effectively have the same sort of view. Yes. Um, but we just now have one set of double arrows relating to the accessories group. So let's perhaps select those arrows. Yep. And you can now see it's getting a little bit messy. Oh, I see what's going um, on. Well, what we've done there, we've restored the accessories group. Mm -hmm. And this is an area where a lot of people find it confusing initially mm. within Windows. And these are the basics that you really need to grasp. We have restored the accessories group to its uh, previous position. Yeah. But the problem is the program manager is a lot smaller. Yes. So now we can just about see the main group. So what we may want to do here, go to the good old window menu again and say tile. So it's even smaller and, uh, now. It's now tiling it again, but um, basically we have these vertical scroll bars mm -hmm. because these two groups are both too large to be displayed and fall within the size of my program manager. So it so is probably a good idea that you have a reasonably sized size program, program manager. manager. We are limited by the, the dimensions of the program manager. And if I just pick up my main group mm -hmm. here, notice if I move it to the left, yes. I can't actually move outside of my program oh, manager right. area. So that's our container, if you like, that restricts us um, to... Yep. Let's just size that, shall we? And you can size these as you did before? Yes, absolutely. I can go down here, make it larger, make it smaller, right. go to the corner as well. Yep. Great. Okay. okay. And I noticed when you were in the window menu earlier that you saw the names of the program groups in there. Yes. What's the reason for that? Well, this again is very, very useful. Um, Many people have lots and lots of uh, program groups on their desktop mm -hmm. um, and you will see all of the groups listed here. So for example, if you have a lot of groups being perhaps covered over mm -hmm. by other groups and you can't see them visibly, um, mm -hmm. so if I just drag this over across network and applications, yep. I want to open those applications, I can go to the window menu and there we have network. Uh -huh. Okay. So the window menu is actually very key here. Mm. Um, when you're working within the, the Windows environment to move between the various groups. So you can either go looking behind and beneath things, or you could just go to the window menu and quickly bring them yeah, up. Yeah, that's right. And notice, um, if I wanted now to select the network group using the mouse, mm -hmm. if I click on there, the main group jumps behind it. Right. Okay. Now, this leads us on to another um, not problem within Windows, but another trap that a lot mm -hmm. of new users fall into. Um, Let's just perhaps take a look at that. What I'm going to do at this stage is just very quickly get Windows to arrange the icons for me. Yep. And I want to just illustrate a very um, regular um, problem that people <laughs> have. I'm looking for my accessories group, actually, uh, which is just over here. So we'll just open up the accessories group. Let's just quickly, whoops, size that now. And what I want to show you here is opening an application. So mm. let's perhaps open right. I know this we're going to come back and look at We this, are going to come, yeah. This is just to, to illustrate a point. So there we have a window with my right application inside of it. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was to click on my program manager... Just before you do that, this, this is just a, a simple text editor, is A it? very simple text editor, yes. Okay, yeah. and this comes with Windows. Yes, it does. Right. Um, if I was now to click on my program manager... 
Ooh. you can see that Wright has disappeared. Where's it gone? Well, it's actually now hiding behind the program manager. And a lot of people fall into this trap and think, oh, crumbs, where's my uh, Write application gone? Mm -hmm. And they go in and they open up Write again. Yes. Because they believe that the application is closed. Well, out of sight, out of mind, I yeah, guess. Yeah, that's right. And that's quite a reasonable assumption to mm -hmm. make, in fact. So let's um, just open up a, another copy of Write there. So show me what you did. Write's running in a little window here. Yeah. And how did you lose it? If we click outside of my Write mm -hmm. um, window, Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Now, if I just minimise Program Manager... Ah, look at that, two rights. Yes, <laughs> there they are. So you could have multiple applications. You maybe. could have multiple. So there is a, a really um, nice way, actually, of getting over this problem. Let's just close down one copy of Write because we don't actually need to have two copies open. If we maximise the Program Manager again... Mm -hmm. Double-clicking. OK. There's a, a menu option here which says Minimise on Use. Now, if we select Minimise on Use, yep. and let's perhaps just, um, there's right there. Mm -hmm. We'll close that down yep. and show the difference. Okay, so okay. let's open up right again. Double clicking. Having selected Minimise on Use, and notice that instantly I open an application, yep. Program Manager has disappeared. It's been minimised for me automatically. And where, where is the Program Manager now? In actual fact, because we left it in the centre of the screen, if I bring right down, you mm -hmm. can see it's there. It might be better for us to put it down there. Okay. So it's easier for people to see. So now there's no confusion. We've opened up right. Um, program Manager has disappeared automatically, bottom left hand of the screen there, and we can work within our application. Could we look at starting another application just to really test this? OK, let's uh, maximise Program Manager and let's perhaps open up uh, Paintbrush mm -hmm. again, something that we'll look at a bit later on. Aha, uh -huh. so there's Paintbrush, yep. there's Write, and there's Write. And you can see the Program Manager's automatically gone down to yeah, the icon. Yeah, and that's very useful. Um, right. I actually only discovered that myself recently, so... Uh, <laughs> so this is a good, a good one for new, new players? Definitely, because it eliminates that uh, element of confusion where you think you've lost your application mm -hmm. and you have lots of copies of the same product open at the same time. Now that we have the applications open, they're also in Windows as well, aren't they? They and are. You can see these familiar controls. The minimise and maximise, so yes, we could perhaps choose to maximise paintbrush. Right. Right is hiding behind that. Now, mm. there's another way, um, Steve, <laughs> that we could also look at applications we have currently on our desktop, mm -hmm. and that's using the keyboard. If we choose Control Escape, ah. that brings up a task list. Now, this is showing us all of the applications that we currently have open mm -hmm. on my PC. Um, so, I may want to move to right. So, if I select right... Just before you do it, you've got untitled in brackets. What right. does that mean? That means that um, the, the documents that we have open mm -hmm. are currently do not have a name. Oh. So until we save them and call them uh, whatever, Steve dot whatever or yep. Jackie dot whatever, then the word untitled will appear in there. I see. The file name would appear if it had a name. And earlier on we had two copies of Right running. Would you see them both in here? Yes, you would. Yeah, so that's another uh, way of finding out where you are with your applications mm -hmm. on your desktop. Okay. And within this particular box, you can choose to um, switch to the application. You can close down your yep. application. Um, you could cascade all of the applications you have or tile, which is just a way of arranging them on your screen. We saw tiling where they're side Tiling by side. side by side. Cascading is... Um, like a card index effect where you have them one behind the other and you just see the title bars. Oh, I see. And again, we'll look at that a bit later <laughs> anyway. Um, or you could choose to arrange the whole of your desktop, including your open applications. OK. But I would, uh, at this particular point in time, perhaps just want to go to right. Mm. So we just say switch to... And there it is. And there it is. It has the, the, the focus yep. of my... Uh, PC. The, the title bar is blue in this case. That tells you that that application is the active application. Okay, and you can see the cursor is, is clicking there. You showed us earlier that we could resize program groups. Is the same true of an application window? Yes, it is. Um, we could move to the side of an application window or indeed to the top. And again, just oh, drag right. that in. So if okay. we select um, my paintbrush application... Uh, it disappears. It's disappeared again. So let's um, just do a quick bit of...